we will begin the My Little Mermaid Sleep and Snuggle Sack in just a moment. Hi everyone, it's Mikey and I'm proud to introduce a brand new pattern series by Yarnspirations.com. It's called the Sleep and Snuggle Sack series. On screen now are other sleep sacks that are available in free pattern and tutorial format. Whimsical and delightful projects that will practically guarantee a warm smile from boys and girls. Super terrific for gift giving and much more. If you're wanting to try another sleep sack, then just click to play and I'll forward you directly to the next one. If you're wanting to do today's project, well, don't wait any further. Let's get started right now. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Let's begin today's tutorial on working on this fabulous mermaid tail sleep and snuggle sack by Yarnspirations.com. Today's tutorial is a comprehensive start to finish project. In fact, I'm working on it behind the scenes in between the filming takes so that I can show you what to do step by step. The fin of the mermaid tail concept is basically the making or breaking point of these types of projects. The designers have done a stellar job in providing the realism look through the execution of color but also within the shaping of the fin. When we're crocheting it, you may think twice but once you attach it to the main sack, the mystery is solved and your heart will go pitter patter in excitement as you see it come together. This mermaid tail minus the filming and preparation it took for me to accomplish this is about 9 hours worth of work. This project can be done in just one day but that's assuming you don't get distracted. On screen now is the anatomy of the mermaid's tail and we'll return back to my chalkboard in between each lesson. There are 3 steps involved in making this mermaid tail. So without further ado, let's go and let's examine the pattern and let's start from there. So let's begin today's pattern. Let's just go through it really quickly and it's a two page pattern just really quite simple and it's four balls of the Bernat Blanket Brights and this is surf variegated. You can see the beautiful colors like so and all of it is one color. The tinges of the colors are basically it's the variegation coming out in the ball. So it's almost like the tube shape that we created for the shark but we're not going to do continuous rounds like we did with the shark. So this one is going to go back and forth and then we're going to sew up along the back seam and then when everything is ready. So we're just going to continue to grow this thing out and then we're just going to get more and more tapered. So what we have to do is that this top area has to go for 24 inches before we start the decrease and then we start decreasing and then we do the tail. Now the tail is two different sections. It's this side and that side sewn together. So today you're going to need an 8 millimeter size L crochet hook today. Four balls of the Bernat Blanket Bright Surf variegated just like so and you'll need a tape measure and maybe a pen to check things off and that's all you'll need today. So let's begin to do row number one. So before we get started remember we're going to be doing the first section here first and then we're going to start tapering and then we'll do the tail. Not a very hard pattern. So we're just going to go back and forth in rows and on the other side of this which you can't see it's just a seam line out through the back. So we're going to go through the rows and then get more and more narrow and then bring it together here at the bottom. So right now we're in the middle section and we have to grow this length 24 inches before we can even start the tapering. So let's get started. Okay, so do you think you're ready? Well, let's begin and we're going to create the main body that is 24 inches of the full length of the tail itself. So let's hook to it and let's start right now. So let's begin row number one. And we're going to start off with the slip knot. Remember that never counts as one. So all we're just going to do is chain 82. So okay, so that doesn't count as one. So just roll that hook back and pull it through. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And I need you to go to all the way to 82 for me and look at the colors coming out. Isn't that fabulous? So let's go for all the way to 82 and meet me back here in just a moment. So let's begin row number one. So we got our chain 82 are on there. So we want to look to underneath the hook. So one, that's one stitch, two, and three. So go to the third one which is the third and turn it over and get the back loop only of the stitch. And what you're just going to do is you're going to do a half double crochet. So wrap that hook and going into the first, uh, into the back one of the third one and then pull through and then pull through all three. That's a half double crochet like so. So now that you did the first one, the next back loop will be right sitting in front of you and the next one and the next one. Just look at it like a spine of a reptile and just wrap the hook and going into the next one. You should only ever go into one strand at this point in this chain. And what this will do is it will give you the most perfect edge look on the other side. So when your child's uh, using it 
uh, or you're trying to squeeze yourself into it, you're gonna have a perfect edge right at the top and it's a really kind of a neat idea. So just look for that back loop only as you go through the chain and I want you to half double crochet. Just take your time. This one is always the hardest part of any project of starting on a chain but once you get beyond this it becomes really easy from this point forward. So just half double crochet all the way down the chain. So now coming up to the end and the last one is a half double crochet of course. So now you have the most perfect edge that you can see and now we're gonna turn and work and go for row number two. I'm gonna show you a little bit of technique here. When it comes to double crochet, when we chained up three, for example, if we chain up three, that is counting as a double crochet and then we go into the next one which is right here. Because it's half double crochet, I'm just gonna back out one, you only chain up two. But with half double crochet, this first chaining up two does not count as a stitch like it would with half, with double crochet. So your first one is right here instead of the next one over. So we're just gonna wrap the hook and going in and double crochet. So you gotta remember that. So on the ends, it appears that there's two stitches here but in actual fact they're just working together as one. And that's where a lot of people go wrong with these things. So all you're just gonna do is just half double crochet yourself back and forth on this until you get to 24 inches in distance from the bottom of this edge to the top of the uh, of this edge that we're working on. So you just gotta keep on going and going and going. It may take you a few hours to do it um, but this is really mostly the hardest part of this uh, particular pattern for time. It's not hard as, as in stitches are hard. It's just this is the, where a lot of the time is sucked up into here because when we get to the tail area we start decreasing the stitches and then it gets quicker. So just half double crochet, crochet yourself to the end. I do want to uh, just reiterate the whole idea of half double crochets on the edges so that you don't accidentally grow too many. So continue to half double crochet all the way down. So I'm coming up all the way to the end and I have a total of two stitches left. Okay to keep this in balance. So it goes right into the end just like you see. So now we're just gonna turn our work okay and just continue to go back. So chain two does not count as anything. Go right up underneath the, that one for a half double crochet and then all the way across. Now I'm gonna do that all the way across and then I'm gonna meet you back one more time because next time we get there there is that chaining of two and the half double crochet in the first one. I do wanna show you so that you can identify it because this one that I just finished was still working on the first row which didn't have it there for me to show you. So let me get to the edge of the other side and I'll show you what to look for. So I'm coming up near the end of the row and I want you to look at it. So you got these two here that are appearing to come out of one, okay, which they are, and then these two. So how many stitches do you got left? You got one, two, and three. So you gotta watch this one, the here, that you don't think there's four here because the chain two counts as nothing, okay? It's just more of a builder than anything. So one, two, and three is your final. Now if you accidentally add more stitches here you will add more stitches to your project. So make sure you go right into the, let me just get a better angle of that. So make sure you go right into it and uh, do not think that there's four at the end because what's gonna happen is that it's gonna miss a line. So you're just gonna turn your work, chain two which does not count as anything again and then right down into the same one right underneath and then just half double crochet across. So that's what you have to do. You have to identify that one right in the edge or you're gonna be in trouble for adding stitches and if you stop too early then you obviously you miss stitches. But you see it's still a nice flat edge. So you just gotta put some trust in that and I want you to get from 24 inches now from here all the way to the top of this and I'll meet you back there and we'll continue then to progress on our My Little Mermaid crochet sleep and snuggle sack. We'll see you again in just a few moments which will be a few hours for me in real time. We'll see you. Bye. So welcome back. I'm now five hours into my project and this is what I've gotten so far and I have my 80 stitches across and I have my 24 inches in the depth. So remember at the end of this project as we get this cocoon done we're going to be folding over the outside edges just like this and we're going to be doing a sewing line all the way down. So we're gonna do that so just don't forget we're gonna be doing that at the end. So let me just uh, take you back to where I wanna start because now we're gonna start doing the decreasing as we work our way closer to the tail. Fabulous! Now let's move on to do the shaping of the tail by doing incremental decreases all the way to the bottom. We will finish this with step-by-step -step instructions with sewing the back seam and across the bottom. What are you waiting for? Let's go. So here we are and we need to have 80 
half double crochets across. You cannot have any more than that because all the decreasing is gonna work in the sense of, of aligning with each other. So for example, say you had 81 here and you were meant to have 80. Do not frog all of this. Don't, don't be uh, silly. So what you just wanna do is that on the very final if you wanted to eliminate a stitch out and if you had like maybe had 84 what I would do is incrementally just uh, put two together just randomly down the line. The next one we're gonna start decreasing anyway so it's just gonna look like it's gonna naturally blend. So we're gonna half double crochet two together. The final two say you want to eliminate a stitch so you just put the final two together like this. So there's one and you don't finish that off, yarn over. Go into the last one, yarn over. You will have five loops on your hook, pull through all five or loops and therefore these two just became one. So this would be then taking it from 81 stitches back down to 80. So that's how you would do it. Now for example say you had 78 instead of 80, randomly through it here maybe around here and maybe around here. I would put two half double crochets into the same one and therefore that will make it expand and it will be pretty well invisible as well. This yarn is really quite forgiving for that. So it's imperative that you get yourself to 80 uh, in order before you move on to the process of finishing off um, the next part with the decrease. So it really does work on that number of 80 and that's what you need to look for. Let's begin and start decreasing our work. So let's begin the decreasing and what we're going to do is that we're gonna chain up two. Okay, remember that doesn't count as anything. And in the first eight, so we come right directly underneath, the first eight we are going to half double crochet. So let's do that. So we're gonna do one and coming into the next one for two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. So now you have eight in a row and now the next two are gonna be together. It's kinda like I just showed. So you wrap the hook going into the next one, pull through and hold it on your hook. Okay, so you got three loops there. Yarn over again going into the very next one, pull through and now you have five loops, pull through all of those like that and those two just became one. So you wanna continue to do that same pattern going all the way across. So the next eight are gonna be by itself. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, and then you just simply just put the next two together. So yarn over, pull, pull through, yarn over, go into the next one, pull through, five loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through all five and those two just became one. So that's what I want you to do for this uh, one here and this is doing the first uh, row of the decrease and this is gonna lead to the tail. So please do that and I'll meet you at the end of this row. So I'm coming up to the final and I'm just did the two together and now I'm doing my final eight. So one, this is two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And look at that, I got two more stitches left. Okay, so there is two left and so those two come together. Okay, so that is how you're gonna end this row with the final two being together. So let's turn our work and let's begin and look back at the instructions and we're gonna continue. So turning our work once again and now for the next row and four others, so five rows in a row, it's simply going to be chaining up two and one half double crochet into each. So the incremental, and this is like the shark that we worked on earlier, is that this is going to taper in nice and slowly. So when I look at it here, I have a diagram that I did. It's pretty rough. <laughs> so what we're doing here is that we're gonna taper in, so it's, we're gonna taper Okay, so we've just done a little bit of taper and then we're gonna do half double crochets. The half double crochets are naturally going to wanna taper in li like, like this. Okay, so it's literally gonna do it. So even though we're stopping to do the decrease at this moment, it still will taper in. It takes time to have tapers. So we're gonna do five rows in a row and then we're gonna do another decrease and then we're gonna do more just regular across and then another decrease 
and we're gonna make our way all the way down to the tail with that same principle. Okay, so this is a really kind of an easy pattern. So really the decreasing is ever is incremental. It's not really severe. So for five rows in a row we wanna do the half double crochet in each of the stitches going across. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna leave that with you. So I want you to do five rows of just half double crochet. Just write it down as you go uh, to make sure that you actually do it and then we're gonna meet back here and we're gonna do another decreasing row after that. So do five half double crochets in a row and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So welcome back. I've just finished five rows of just regular half double crochet and right here is where I was when I did the together decrease and then five rows. One, two, three, four and five. You will notice on the outside here is that do you see it's flat and now it's just a slightly tapering in. This does not like taper in like drastically so it does a nice streamline kind of look because that's uh, kind of how mermaids are projected. So right now we're ready to move on again. We're gonna do another decrease which is gonna continue this taper further in. Let's begin to do that next. So moving along we're going to chain two which doesn't count as anything if you remember and simply we are going to do the first seven. Remember come into that first one don't forget those and you're gonna do that one plus um, six more. So it's gonna be a total of seven half double crochets in a row. So this is two, this is three, four, five, six and seven. So once you get seven in a row done the next two become together. So just wrap the hook going into the next one, pull through wrap the hook going into the next one after that, pull through, five loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through all five loops. So continue that same patterning going all the way around or all the way across. You're gonna five half double crochets by itself and then the next two are together. Continue to do that. So the last time we were down here it was eight. So we're gonna notice that we're gonna progressively get less and less stitches between where it does the two together. Please do that for this entire row and I'll see you at the end of this row. So I'm coming up to the end. This is two together and the last ones are gonna be here. So one, two, three, four, five, that's, that's gonna be six and seven. So now the final two stitches are gonna be together. So if you, this is not your final two to put them together then you know something's wrong. So just wrap the hook going in, wrap the hook going into the final stitch. Okay, oopsie, I went into a gap. I don't wanna do that. I wanna go into a chain and then pull through all five loops. So that finishes. But what I did notice as I was coming across, look, it's starting to taper in. So if you just match it, you can see right on the edge here see how it was out and now it's starting to come in. So for the next five rows again you're just gonna do one half double crochet into each. So chaining up two and then just continue to half double crochet all the way across for five more rows. Please do that and then I'll meet you up again and then we'll start another decrease. So five rows half double crochet back and forth. So now I'm back and I've done another five rows of just regular half double crochet and if you look at again at the edge it's now starting to sweep around and really being amazing. So if you really kind of fold it up on each other you will notice that it really is kind of tapering in. Let's move along and we're going to do a decrease row once again chinning up two and this time it's going to be six half double crochets in a row and then we're gonna do a decrease. So one and two three, I sound like a aerobic workout, <laughs> four, this is my exercise, five <laughs> and six. And then we're gonna do two together. So the next two just put them together with the half double crochet together. Continue that same idea all the way across. So six in a row, then two together, six in a row and I'll see at the end. You will notice that this is getting shorter and shorter in distance and you're speeding up. I know I am so that's a great sign. So continue to go all the way across the row. So I'm coming up to the other side and that I just did my two together and we're gonna do another six. So one, two, three, four, five and six. Now the, there's two stitches left and of course those are gonna be together. So just pu uh, put those two together with the half double crochet together. Decrease and put those there. 
So again the next five rows again are just gonna be half double crochets. This actually is getting much shorter the distance so I'm really starting to enjoy the project even more. You know when you get closer to the end you start feeling really good. So half double crochet in each stitch going all the way across for another five rows. So here we have a long view and it's extending quite far. You can see the bend of the taper that we're currently making and then you see it, it flattens out and goes straight. So the upper part is where we started and now we're here and we're continuing to work along. Let's move along to the next part. We're gonna do another decrease next. So another five rows are complete and we're ready for another decrease. So this time last time we did six in a row then a decrease. This time it's gonna be five. So let's chain up two and the first five will be one half double crochet each. So one, two, three, four, and five. And then the next two are together. So just going into the next, pull through, wrap and go into the next. After that, pull through. You get five loops, pull through all of it. Continue to do the same thing. Five half double crochets in a row and then two together. I'll see you at the end of this row. I'm coming up to the end of that same row and there's gonna be five in a row. So the last one was two together. So this is one, two, three, four, and five. So we're gonna have two stitches left after this and those are the ones that are coming together. So let's bring these last two together and that concludes this row. So what I need you to do then is turn your work and we're gonna do another five half double crochets uh, rows and it's gonna be amazing. So continue to do that. Turn your work, chain up two and put in half double crochets for five rows straight. And I'll see you back here and we'll probably do another decrease next. So my five half double crochets are now complete and we're ready for another decrease. So what we're going to do then is then chain up two this is the final time we'll be doing a decrease on the this part of the body and the first four will be by themselves. So have double crochet the first four. So we got one and two, three, and four. So the next two are together. So please uh, do this uh, same patterning. You've, you've got it. You know what you're doing all the way across. So another four in a row and then two together. I'll see you at the end of this row and it's not a very long row so it's gonna go nice and quick too. So I'm coming up to the end of this row. This is a two together. Then let's finish up. So we got one, two, it's like before. The last two are gonna be together. This is three and four. So you got two stitches left. Put those together and what we need to do then is that finish this row and then we only have five more rows left to do on this whole uh, main body section. So turn your work once again and five more rows of just half double crochet into each and then we're gonna fasten off but wait for me before, before you do that and I'm gonna show you what to do then with the assembly. We're going to then uh, put a, 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 a seam in and then I'm gonna show you how to close off the tail so that it stays in balance so that you can keep the sewing line underneath of the project. So continue to half double crochet five rows in a row and meet me back here in just a moment. So I'm now completely done this whole main area here. It's one big flat piece but eventually we have to fold one side over the other and create a seam line right up through the middle. What I'm gonna do uh, right now is that I'm gonna show you what it, to do here on the edge. I have not fastened off yet. I'm gonna show you a technique that I use to fasten off so that you never see your tail ends. So this is currently what it looks like and we're gonna be ready for the tails shortly but we gotta do our seams first. So let me show you how to do the weaving of the ends off. So I'm completely done. I'm just gonna cut a string maybe about 12 inches and I'm just gonna pull it through this loop and that locks it. Okay, so I'm not quite done yet. Because this is thick yarn we want to feed this onto a darning needle and we do this with this particular kind of yarn and project all the time. We did it on the shark earlier and now we're gonna do it here. So we're just gonna feed it onto a darning needle taking the seam and I want you to just glide the needle up underneath the stitches catching into the fibers and poke it back out maybe about an inch or so. Do not come out to the finish line on the outside just stay underneath it and you want to go back and forth three times. So this is one. Okay so when you do to pull it don't go crazy and pull it too much. Go in a different path. Okay 
but uh, like in a different path. So go back in the other direction. If you go in the exact same path it'll fall out. So you just wanted to capture around some different fibers. So this is two and then coming back in again and through a different area and pulling out the other side. Just use your fingers to kind of feel around but don't stab yourself and that's three. So now this is permanently in and now I can just safely cut that right down and I never have to worry about it. Okay, so this is how I would do the seam lines uh, whenever I'm trying to use my yarn uh, in order to hide the loose ends. So you really kind of never see exactly where it is in the end. So let's continue and let's uh, start talking about seams next. So my project's laid out on the table like this. The taper is towards me. The other side is in the upper side. It doesn't matter if I start up here or down here. It doesn't matter. So what I wanna do is that I wanna take these sides and I wanna flip them so that they appear. So let me just uh, back off the camera right now and let me show you exactly what to do. So you're just gonna turn this in, okay? And you're gonna turn this one in and you're going to start down here at the bottom. Now you notice that it's in the middle. It, that doesn't really matter right now. It will matter when we go to sew the, the tail onto it that we're, we're, we're gonna do for the bottom. So what I just wanna do is that I want to do this all the way up to the top. Now this is 43 inches approximately from here all the way to the top. You will probably need uh, maybe about three, possibly four different yarn strands to go that much space. If your uh, darning needle yarn is too big then it, it becomes a real pain. So what I'm gonna show you now is that I'm gonna show you how to do the seam all the way up and we're just gonna follow it and this is gonna be the inside of what you're looking at is the inside of the project. So after we've done the seam we're gonna flip it and, and the other way will be the outside. So you have to decide if you like this side better there should be really no difference to it but if you like one side better than the other just flip it so that the the one in the inside will be the one that you see when the child is wearing it. So let's continue let me show you how to put these seams together. So let's begin to do the seam line all the way up. It doesn't matter if it's out here or here as long as it's just so you can access it. Where it appears right now in the cocoon area doesn't matter until we sew down the tail. So um, so what I'm saying to you is that even though I'm looking at it straight down the middle it doesn't really matter at this particular moment where you're sewing it. You're just sewing that seam. So let's create a slip knot on the other side of the string. I'm going to show you how to put this on. I'm gonna go up a little bit and then I'm gonna show you how to to fasten it off and then join another string. So what you're looking at here is that you wanna match the rows. Okay, I actually, this is take number two. I got a partial way up and I started uh, going a little bit to offset like this and then what's gonna happen by the time I go to 43 inches at the top, I'm gonna end up with the top looking like this. Okay, so what I wanna do is that I wanna make sure that I'm looking visually where these rows are joining and that's what my cue is to keep myself on track. So I wanna insert the needle always into part of the chain. Never go into a space like where my finger can go through. So when you go in, I could go in the space here but then it's gonna look really awkward. So you want to go into like a chain area only. Okay, and then a chain area on the other side matching a, the rows together. And so you wanna pull through and right where I did the slip knot on the other side, I wanna insert my needle into that and it's gonna lock it into position and we're gonna use a darning needle to hide this last string at the end. So I'm just gonna pull it nice and tight. So you can see that the rows are matching each other. So this is a whip stitch. So you just jump on one side to the other, again going into chains, not into spaces. Okay, and what I want to do is just look up and just see where the next chains are. Just use your fingers, use your visual cues. I would almost consider doing one join across each row as I go up. This is gonna be the inside of the project that we're looking at. So any imperfections that you do can almost be hidden in this particular row because we have to flip this to the other side. Um, this is the inside of the project at this moment that you're looking at. So when you go to pull snug, don't go and pull it to the point where this starts to buckle upward. You wanna keep it firm but never crazy tight. So let's uh, just continue to move up and I will stop when I get enough of this my string used and then I'll show you how to uh, weave in your ends to continue. Okay, so I'm running out of string and so now I haven't got all the way to the top obviously. So what I'm gonna do right at this point is that I'm gonna tie it so that it does a knot here. 
So just feed it through so it ties it into like a knot and I would do that twice. And what I'm gonna do, you don't want to lose strings inside this because chances are your child's gonna crawl in just for fun. And so you want to slide it in the fibers on this side of the work. Okay, so on this side that you're, that you're looking at, you're gonna go in one, you're gonna go in a different path just like I showed you before, two and back in through a different path for three. So back and forth three times and then you can just fasten off. So all you just need to do is restart another strand of yarn once again right where it's here and continue to go your way to the top. I actually think I'm only gonna need two strands so I did four feet of yarn the first time so I'm gonna do probably another four feet this time and I will get all the way to the top. Once you're all the way to the top just finish it exactly the way I just showed you here and you should be good to go and uh, then we're gonna head back to the bottom of the tail area and we're gonna start working on that next. Okay so I'm back. The seam is all the way up to the top. I'm actually really quite happy with it. It looks great. This is still the inside of the cocoon area. So we're gonna be flipping this to the other side once we get this uh, tail area done. So what I want you to do is I want you to fold the tail in half. Okay so you see it? Just fold it directly in half. Let's grab some more yarn for your sewing and we wanna sew along the bottom but let me tell you something before you do that. So what we need to do is that this seam line needs to be directly in the middle. Okay, so you don't need to ruler it. You can just eye it up and what we want to do is that we want to sew this whole area together at the bottom and the tail is going to attach at this particular spot as well. So creating a slip knot just like I showed you before and just feeding in your darning needle onto the other side. Okay, so what you wanna just do is just right in the end where it's kind of folded over, just go directly across right into the stitch work and just pull through and put the needle through the slip knot to lock it. Now this is a little trick. You can just lay this down over top and then what's happened is that you advance to the next stitch that's in, in both sides and just go directly across from each other. And when you lay this down over top what's gonna happen is it's gonna come back over top and lock it into position. So again just coming advancing one more stitch in both sides and just advance all the way over. So you just wanna whip stitch yourself all the way across. Um, just I've already shown you how to whip stitch so it's just back and op over top. And then remember don't go too crazy with the tightness of it. You just wanna make sure it's, it's snug but not um, compressed so that you don't distort it in any way. So see you can see I'm getting that stuck underneath so I don't need to weave that in later. It's right underneath the stitch work and this is gonna be the inside of the cocoon anyway. So continuing to do that when you get to the end just fasten off. Just hide in the uh, yarn ends like I showed you before. I'm uh, just uh, going back and forth three times and you should be good to go and this one is really easy. So this is gonna be the, the final conclusion of this. Make sure that you turn this inside. You're looking at the inside right now. Just turn it, flip it the other way so that you're looking at the good side. So if the child is wearing it, you, you can see it with the size he's on or she's on. So continue to do that and when we come back then we'll start and work on the tail area next. Perfect, now you're ready to continue on and now we're ready to do the fun stuff that will get the kids all excited. So let's do the tail together. I've taken my time in this particular section to show you the horizontal bar section of a stitch and extra tips. We will finish this section by joining the two fins together to create one tail and let's get going. So let's ready, set, and hook. So let's move on to the tail. We have the cocoon done. It's been uh, already has the seam. It's done on both sides. Now it's time for the tail. So the tail consists of two different panels that are sewn together at the small area here and what you're looking at here is that you will see that the shaping looks different on the model and there's a reason for that which I'll explain. So what we need to do is that we need to do two of these and I have my stitch markers up because I'm going to teach you some techniques in order to keep counts on this particular item and I think that you'll be very successful with this at the same time. So let's go over the pattern. So you see that the tail looks all nice and ruffled up. It looks really quite authentic. The tail on a mermaid item like this is, will make or break the project. So it, this looks really realistic. I think the fans are gonna love it and I think it's really not hard to maintain. And so you're gonna notice it looks really ruffled but then this one doesn't here on 
what we have. So what, what's gonna happen is that we're gonna do two pieces, one side and then the other. I've already done one just to practice and so I'm just gonna do the other. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna look like this. And at the top here, once they are uh, both are done we're gonna sew right here so there will be an addition on this side but you will notice that the distance of here to the top of this item here is like big time difference. So what's gonna happen is that we're gonna put both pieces together and we are going to crinkle up the top area up here and this is, has like um, ribbing effects going on and so we're going to just when we do it just kind of do it like this and it's going to cause this to kind of bend and really kind of have some really unique features at the bottom. So both of the panels literally have to fit within the top of this area here. So the other one will go over here. So this is what we're going to be concentrating on today. So you're going to notice that we have some ribbing effect on both sides. Okay and this is not as hard. I have some stitch markers in to help keep count but how did I do this and this is a really unique technique and I've done a little mini sample in another color to show you where you need to look for in order to create the ribbing effect. So let's uh, do that first and then we're going to come and start this next. So here in the pattern we have what is a note here of where we're to go and we're to play within the horizontal bars that we're going to go into. So when we go to look at stitches over here is that we always have the typical look across the top. So we always have our two sti our strings on top which make a stitch just like you see right there and there. But what we're going to do with this particular one is that when we turn it around we are going to look for the horizontal bar. So the one on top here okay that you see right here if you just turn it you'll see that it's the regular stitch. So we want to play within the secondary one right here. This is the horizontal bar. Okay now when you're going to do this with the variegated yarn this is not so easy to tell. So you just got to get your eyes just used to here where you're looking because you can see it in the variegated yarn. It's just not as obvious and where did we finish up there. So when we go here where do we see it here? The, it's different colors because it's variegated but it's right here. Right? Do you see it? Okay. So that's where we're going to be playing. When you do that what's going to happen is it's going to make the other side have a ribbing effect just like this. Okay and what it's going to do is it's going to allow the material to bend and shape by doing so. And you know technically like fins of a, any kind of fish anyway already have ribs. So this is a kind of an easy way to do it. However this is a really easy way to screw up too and this is actually my second time that I had to try this because I totally screwed up the first time and I want to show you some techniques uh, which I think will help you in the end as well. So you'll notice in the pattern and I will teach how to look at this is that whenever we head to the outside of the tail all the way to the bottom of the tail where you see it dangling that is always going to be a half double crochet on the horizontal bar. When we go back in the other direction it's always going to be a double crochet in the horizontal bar. So we go out and half double crochet and we come back with double crochet. So let's uh, continue and let me show you what to do. So we're going to start off and we're going to uh, chain two which counts as a, as a half double crochet. Now technically what we normally do is come into the very first stitch but in this particular case we don't. We have to look for the horizontal bar here. So what we have to look for is this piece right here. Do you see it? Okay so the top if I stick my pencil all the way through is your stitches, your normal stitches but if you look just below it that's the horizontal bar. So let's uh, go out and do a half double crochet on the horizontal bar. So wrap the hook coming in and just use your kind of thumb to kind of force things onto your hook if you have to and coming in and just secure the horizontal bar with a half double crochet and this is instantly going to create the ribbing effect on the other side. So the first one's in. So look for the next one. Do you see it? It's right in front of you. So what I did um, I had to I actually did the tail and I had to frog the whole thing and then I tried again and I still screwed up. So what I was doing is that sometimes I was grabbing um, the strands that are like leaning down like this or I was going for this one up here. You see that? So what I want to do is look for the obvious one. I was making it harder for myself. I don't know why. And because of that I was throwing off my counts and therefore I ended up with more stitches than I, <laughs> I was supposed to be decreasing. So you just move along on the horizontal bar when you're moving on to the outside of the fin. Okay. So 
what's gonna happen is that once you get close to the outside of the fin, the very bottom, is that you're going to stop three stitches short in order to create the look of the fin. So just look here, one, two, three. So you're gonna put right here. So if you were to do a stitch marker right in that spot, it would really greatly help you. So let's do a stitch marker there. So one, two, three, and I'm gonna put a stitch marker in the fourth one. Okay. Also what helps me as well is to keep count of the stitches and we'll talk about that when we get there. So this is kind of a, a really unique way to do things. It's kind of a little complicated but I will tell you that as I mentioned already is that the tail of any kind of mermaid thing like this will make or break the project. People will either be convinced by the tail or they will say the tail looks cheap. So this is one I think the tail is actually pretty realistic and I think it's amazing. So I'm about to hitch the, hit the stitch marker so this is the last one that I'm about to stop at. Okay so we stop there and it creates that look of what you see within the pattern of kind of the jetting in and out. So let's turn our work and do the next row going in the back in the other direction. So whenever you turn your work and you head back toward the bottom of the tail where it attaches to the main project is that you are going to just always chain two. That counts as one of the stitches. So this one here, the, the rails look slightly different. The horizontal bar looks slightly different when versus crochet and uh, double crochet. So here, this is double crochet so it looks slightly different and this here is half double crochet. So you'll see what kind of likes leans down a little bit and so you gotta watch that. So we're just gonna immediately jump to the first one. We're gonna skip this one. Just jump to the first one and we are always going to double crochet ourselves back to the top of the tail where it joins to the main body. So going down to the bottom right to the end of the fins is going to be half double crochet down and then on the way back up we are going to do double crochet on the horizontal bar moving back toward the body. Again it makes a big difference to count and I will talk about that when we get to the pattern. But this is how you would uh, do this kind of stitch. It's not hard. Um, it took me a little bit of practice. Now this last one is always hard to get into. So you see here, you, it's just right there. You just gotta kind of manipulate things a little bit. I don't want to have any denial here in the video. <laughs> Not everything is easy peasy. And so then we come into the very final turning chain. So don't go into a gap, go into a turning chain as your final. Okay? So now you look at it here, it's like well where's the ribbing? Here, it's on the other side. See that? So the ribbing is every other one depending on what side that you're looking at. So let's uh, go back to the pattern and let's start reviewing and let's see if you can manage to do this one. So here's the pattern once again and we are gonna make two tails alike. We're gonna chain 38 to start and then we're going to do some half double crochet across the chain and then we're gonna start this uh, work. So it's gonna be repeating rows two and three several times. So row number two is heading toward the outside of the fin. So all the way down to the bottom and row three heads back to the join. So it's always gonna be half double crochet coming out and then double crochet coming back in toward the tail and it's always going to be in the horizontal bars. So once we get this done it says repeat this until you get a total of what, uh, what was it, 21 stitches remaining. So every time you go out, okay, you are going to subtract three stitches off the very end and then come back. Okay, so then when you go to repeat it again, you're going to subtract another three. So what we had here is that we had 36 half double crochet, but when we went back out, we left the three remaining, so there's only 33. So then we come back into the top, so you have 33. We're gonna come back out again, and this time will only be 30 because we'll stop three short and then come back for 30. We come back out for 27 only, and then go back in for 27. Back out for 24, back in for 24, out for 21 and then back in. It's important that you count. So what you're gonna notice here on the pattern when I go to look at it is that it naturally wants to do a kind of like a bending shape like this. Do you see? Oh let me uh, just uh, zoom this out and what you want to notice here is that it naturally wants to make this curve that the that it has. That's what the neat thing about it. So we're gonna do one side and then we're gonna do the other. Sew it up here and then we're gonna start bunching at the top and then sew it to the main body to give the exact look 
that you see really quite here. So let's give this a try and see if you can manage this one and this is not hard. I think this is what is gonna make or break your project. So let's begin. So let's begin with this slip knot. Okay, so it says that we need to chain 38. So let's do so. So I left a little bit extra so I can I use that to hide it in. I'm also gonna use a stitch marker. It's just white yarn. I just left over yarn. Doesn't matter the color. So remember we're just gonna chain 38. So one, two, three, four, and five. Go all the way to 38 for me and maybe back here in just a moment. So I have my 38 completed just like you see here. So what I wanna do is go fourth chain from the hook. So one, two, three, go to the fourth, turn it around, get the back loop only of that and just half double crochet. So now that you have it turned over, the rest of it is gonna stay turned over. So this first one counts as a half double crochet and so does this one you know, for counting. So you're just gonna move across your chain and just half double crochet in the back loop only. Once you do the first one, the chain stays turned over which makes it nice and easy. So by the time you get all the way back across, you're going to notice that there's gonna be 36 half double crochets which includes this one right here, the beginning. So please just half double crochet all the way across your chain. So I have my 36 on here. Do double check. Okay, just pull them apart and just make sure that you have 36 half double crochets. It makes a difference. You're doing two of them, you want them to match. Turn your work and just hold on here and what we're going to do is that we're going to place a stitch marker. So this time on the way out, remember this is the end of the fin now. This is uh, this side here where we are is the top where it joins to the bottom of the cocoon. Okay, so what we want to do is that we wanna come back out but stop on the fourth one. So we wanna leave three stitches unmarked. So the first one is one, two, three and go to the fourth. Grab that stitch marker and I want you to pull that through to give you a visual aid on where to stop. Now because you're not playing in the top of the stitches because you're gonna do the horizontal bar, you gotta just use this as a visual. Um, as I mentioned before, I did make a mistake in the first time through is that I wasn't counting. I honestly recommend that you need to count you physically need to count as you go. So what I'm gonna do is that we're gonna st start out. So we're gonna start out and this time that we're only gonna have 33 stitches instead of 36 because we have to stop early. So let's begin and on the way out always to the end of the tail and we're always gonna stop three stitches short and it's always gonna be a half double crochet. So chain two and jump to the next one. Now I already showed you how to do the horizontal bar so look for it. So do you see it? It's right there. Okay, once you do the first one you'll see them all start to pop. Your, your eyes just automatically go to it. So just here's the first one and we need to count all the way across to, and this time it's only gonna be 33. So we're just gonna half double crochet at the one. So remember this first one counts as one so now you're officially at two. So then you go along, three, keep going with the horizontal bar, four, five, six. Now I'm making this look easy. Remember I have had practice. Okay, I did the other one already so I'm making it look easier. So six and seven. Let me turn it around so you see that the back rib is starting to happen. So I'm on number seven at this moment. and eight, nine, ten, eleven. I'm not gonna count all these rows just so you know. So that was eleven and this twelve, thirteen, fourteen, 15, this is 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24 is next, 24, 25, 26, 
27, 28, 29, 30, 31, let's get some more yarn, that was 31, 32, and 33. So here it is there. So just let your counting be accurate. Okay, so let that just work out. So that was 33 across. If you're not sure, just count again. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. Oh, I'm one short. So there you go. There's the stitch marker there. I'm just, I must have lost count at some point. So it is at 33 now. So this is where I went wrong the first time is that I never counted. And because I did that and I would have done it again this time around, it's important that you count. Let's turn and work and go for the next row. So these are the two repeat rows. So every time now, this is the end of the fin. This is where it joins. You're always start stopping three short. So when you come back to the top where it joins, it's always gonna be chain two, move to the next stitch, horizontal bar, and it's always gonna be double crochet back up. Now you've already eliminated your three out, so it will again be 33 for a second time. So you will, will have noticed on my notes that it's always down and back with the same number of stitches. So it's three, four, this is five, six, so seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, this is fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, Next one here. Remember I said that in the sample. It's always harder to see this one. This is 31. This will be 32. And remember we were looking for 33. So just take your time getting that one out. When you're operating this big yarn, sometimes these hooks are too blunt. That was 32. And then finally in the turning chain for 33. So you can see that we went 33 out. We stopped three early and then 33 back out. So we're gonna turn our work and now you need to continue to repeat. So again, what I would do to prepare is that count one, two, three, go to the fourth stitch, move that stitch marker. So just get that stitch marker that you had and pull through there. That'll give you the visual cue that you need. Okay, it's perfect. And then what I want to do then is restart again. So this time instead of 33 down, I want to stop early. So this time it's going to be 30. So you go down for 30 on the, on the horizontal bar for half double crochet, come back for 30. Then you're going to go down again and you'll eliminate another three. So it'll be 27 and then 27 back up. You'll go down again for 24 because you're going to eliminate three and then back up. And then you're going to go back down again for 21 
and then back up. So what I want you to do is continue to do this so that you end up with the right number of stitches at the end and then what we're gonna do is that we're gonna come back is that and then we're gonna sew everything together. So I think I'm just gonna just um, stick with you with one more down and back just to make sure that you've got this under your belt. Okay so let's begin going back down. We've already moved the stitch marker so that's only gonna be 30 down. So remember on the way down toward the end of the fin is chaining two coming to the next one is only gonna be 30 um, half double crochets on the horizontal bar. So this is considered two because that first chaining of two counted as one and let's start moving down. So this is gonna be three This is four. And it's five. Oops, this was gonna be five. Now it's gonna be five. Tension is a big deal on this particular stitch, just so you that you're aware. I'm making it look harder than it was. So I'm which one, two, three, four, five, and six, continuing to go down. So I'm gonna go down for 30. This is gonna be seven. and eight this is nine and it's ten eleven twelve Thirteen, fourteen. This is fifteen. Sixteen. This is seventeen. 18, 19, 20. My camera angle that I always do is not um, really convenient for me but it's more convenient for you to see. So 21, 22, 23, Okay, we got 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. I know this is long and 30. So 30 is right where the stitch marker is so that I know I'm right. So if you want to count it to double check then you can. So then once you're down and you've stopped then you're three short you can see it's starting to really take shape. Turn it around. This time you chain two and then half double crochet yourself back on the horizontal bar going in the other direction. I'm gonna leave this with you now to complete the rest of this uh, particular tail. The instructions are there. Um, I did show you my notes of the stitch counts which you can go back and just grab a screen copy if you want to. Just write it down if it makes it easier for you. And so when we come back I'm gonna have this done and then we're gonna sew it together and then we're gonna carry on because we're literally almost done your mermaid tail once you get two pieces of these done and then we put it together. So last time I left you we were about here and I worked my way back up to the top and you can see it steps up just like so. This one I think is better than the original one that I started with but I came to understand the pattern and I think it makes a difference when it, you can do it twice run through. So I'm just gonna weave in this area here. I'm gonna do that later but right now what we want to do is that we want to do a second one of this. So you're gonna do a second one and then you're gonna meet me back here in just a moment and I'm gonna show you how to attach them together and then we're gonna attach it then to the sock itself. Okay so I brought back my second one. I can take out any stitch markers that I've used. Those are good. Those are gone. Don't ever worry about those again. So now what I want to do is that I want to attach it right here so that the outside looks like this. So you're thinking wow that looks pretty boxy. Remember that when you look at the sag area 
back up at the top it's only this wide. So all of these have to then compress into here which gives you the look of the actual fin. So what we want to do is that we want to sew along this line and I left an extra long um, strand on one. So what I'm gonna do is just grab my darning needle. I didn't say to do that by the way but if you did great. <laughs> I don't know what I'm thinking half the time but usually I do leave an extra long one when I'm finishing a project anyway so I left one on the other side too. So what I'm just gonna do is match the stitches across from each other with the whip stitch just going into the original one here and then just go into the same matching stitch on the other side and I wanna pull through that. Now I actually showed you how to whip stitch already uh, with the using that slip stitching technique with the slip knot. Um, do that if you have to fasten on new yarn. If not you can just do exactly what I'm doing. So I'm just going to match the stitches across all the way down and then I'm just gonna weave in my, my strand just like I showed you before with going back forth three times in order to do this. So this will, even if this creates a slight ridge you already have the ridges already appearing anyway. So it's really it's kind of a extra technique but I don't think it will. Um, this technique can lay pretty flat. So continue just to whip stitch all the way to the end and then fasten that off and then we're gonna come back and we're almost done. Literally almost done this thing and uh, I literally started last night and I got five hours in last night and then a little bit today. So it hasn't been too much of a, a, a tough project generally. So let's uh, get this done and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So get this completely sewn across and weaved in and weave in all the extra yarn tails at the same time. So now I'm back. I have it sewn together on both sides. You can see the ridging is on both sides so it doesn't matter what side the child is wearing it on. So now what we have to do is that we have to kind of bunch up the top and we have to do it strategically. So what we need to do is that we need to single crochet 20 stitches from here to here and 20 from here to here. And literally if you're familiar with crochet this 20 is way too big for this section. So therefore it's gonna start compressing in and what you have to do is be strategic about this and it's going to create the layers that it looks like in the model by doing so. Okay, so what we want to do is just grab our yarn and we're gonna stop, or we're gonna start in the one corner and work our way across. So my goal is, and I'm not gonna do this live on camera, but my goal is here when you go in you gotta make sure that you try to get it into like chain work. Don't ever try to get it into a space because then you'll see it hanging from the, the sleep sack with spaces. So get it right into chain work. So coming into the first one just put the straggler down on top of it so that it gets stuck underneath. So let's just join it with the slip stitch, chain one and single crochet into the same one. So in the first few, so somehow you gotta be able just to kinda eye out maybe 20 here. Okay, you gotta do 20 but just eye it out in some way. So you got one, two, three, four, five. There's five ridges. Okay, so if you look at that, so then if you went in between, so this is, would give you 10, right? And then you just gotta kinda look at it. So you almost gotta just kinda work it out and uh, it's actually not that hard to do. So just working your way across the top just get 20 in there. So I've already done one. This is two and three and four. And once you get enough of that in there you can hide that straggler too. That was four. So you got five is going into a chain and just continue to go. So I'm already at five here so 10 would be about there and then at 15 and then 20 and then I continue again. So just don't fasten off just continue to do the same thing going all the way across. Okay so now I have my 20 on each side and I'm ready to go. So again it's much bigger than the sack that you have here. So what I recommend is that what we're gonna do is that we have to get all of this into just this little space. So grabbing some stitch markers, just some spare yarn is I wanna come into the middle one here. Just eye it up. You don't need a ruler and just eye it up the middle section of your sleep sack. Okay and pull that yarn through and that'll help you stay in balance when you're going to sew this because you kinda have to squash things. So I'm just going to just tie a little bow tie like that. So now what I want to do is that I wanna do the same with the outside edges and so just again just coming in to the outside edge, outside edge here 
and again I just need it to hold it into position. So I can figure out how to sew all that so that it's gonna stay relatively equal. Nothing's worse than you know getting this done and then realizing that your tail is out of balance. So just continue to do this. Okay and then come back to the other side. And to the outside one here. And you can kind of see it's starting to look like that model of just like the nice tail feathers all ruffle or tail feathers and the tail fan all looking all nice and ruffly. If you want to do any more of these you can if you need it to hold it into position but it's really important. I did this for the shark as well just to make sure that I got it right. And so this is what it's got to look like. So I have to kind of just bend things and fold things as I sew it to the end and it will create these nice ruffling effects of there of that when I get it done. So you might just want to just kind of work things up. See these bends? See that? This is why you've gone in those ridges to give you that ultimate look of being raised like that. And so when you squish them all together as you can see the designer has thought about that is that they kind of all fan and work perfectly and fit nice and perfect into that space like so. So now it's my goal to put these two together with the darning needle. Using the same technique that I did before just a strand of yarn and slip knot. I want to start on one side and just continue to work my way across. I want to take my time. I've already shown you how to whip stitch so all you're just gonna do here is just whip stitch it to the outside edge. I'm just gonna get rid of this one that's in the way. It helps just to get visualization but don't take out the others until you get there. Okay so I'm just gonna do this come straight across get to the outside. So look at the very base of it and just kind of come across and then pull it mostly the way through. When you get close to that slip knot just put it the needle through the slip knot just like this and that will lock it into position. So pull it nice and tight. Okay and I'm gonna worry about this extra strand later. So just pull it everything nice and tight and what I want you to do is look for the ridges. So where it's ridged it can be popped up because the other one is naturally wanting to pop down and on the other side it looks identical as well. So just moving along. Okay just moving along the tail. Just put them together with, with, with whip stitches like so. So my goal is is to I, I need to get all of this kind of equally sewn in before I get to the stitch marker in the middle. Therefore I know all of this fin is then equally on one side and then do the same for the other. So I'm gonna leave this with you. Just kind of keep going and get this all sewn in. So that's it for today my friends at Yarnspirations.com and myself Mikey of the Crochet Crowd. We would like to thank you for joining us today in making My Little Mermaid Sleep and Snuggle Sack. It's been a pleasure to teach you today and if you're looking for more free pattern and tutorial ideas you can always count on us to keep the inspiration free and ideas flowing. Have an amazing day. Hope to see you back here real soon. Bye bye. We'll see you again.